Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to be taking a look at the latest release from Simu Emulator version 1.15.5. I also want to apologize, 1.15.5 was released three days ago now, but due to some unforeseen computer related events, I was unable to make this video or make any videos in fact until right now. Okay, so since CMU was released for its Patreon supporters on the 19th of April, this of course means that 7 days later it's going to be releasing for free for everyone else on the 26th. There are in fact some very nice quality of life changes, but if you were expecting the Vulkan API, I'm sorry to tell you that that is not going to be present in this new CMU version. For any AMD GPU users out there, I also want to make you aware that I am currently working on a Linux based guide so that all of you AMD users are going to be able to get much better performance when running CMU emulator through Wine on Linux. Okay, so back to 1.15.5, let's now take a look at absolutely everything that has changed in this new emulator version. First up, if you have been using CMU 1.15.5, you should make sure that you are updated to the latest version. This latest version is 1.15.5b. If you are a CMU patron, you will find a download link for that in your email or over on the CMU Patreon page. This B version has fixed an issue in relation to frame buffer creation that would cause several games to crash upon loading, so please, as I said, make sure to download this latest B version. Next up, we have some changes to the native UI of CMU CMU emulator, you'll see when you right click your game, you now have this option to select your specific graphics packs for that specific game. As you can see, I simply selected Hyrule Warriors and I now have access to any and all of the available graphics packs for Hyrule Warriors. Similarly, we have a new change to the filtering method of the main graphics pack area. You can see we now have this search bar at the very top. When I type in Zelda, all of these games show up, and when I type in Xeno, Xenoblade Chronicle X shows up, giving me instant access to any of the graphics packs for the specific game of my choosing. We also have several new options in the Options General Settings tab. We now can remember the position of both the main CMU window and also the position of the separate gamepad window. Basically, all both of these settings do is lock the exact last known position of your CMU emulator window to the same position it was previously in. As I said, we still don't have access to the Vulkan API, hopefully it will be released in 1.16.0 and practically all of the other settings are also identical in this window. Personally, I really like the option to select your graphics packs from your own specific game tiles and I also really, really like the ability to lock and make sure that the CMU window is going to be in the same place at all times. Further to this, I would also like to see them add in future the ability to make sure that the graphics pack window always opens at the exact same coordinates on your screen. Personally, it really, really annoys me when I open the graphics pack window multiple times and every time it's in a different coordinate or area of my monitor on screen. Next up, we have several changes to the CPU or JIT. This change hopes to increase the accuracy of floating point instructions when using any of the recompilers, so single, dual or triple core recompilers within CMU, and it hopes to fix issues in games like Paper Mario, Color Splash, Super Mario, 3D World, World 1, 4, and also games like 8-Bit Hero. Please bear in mind that this is only an initial implementation and it hasn't yet fixed all of those major issues, but it's still very, very nice to see steps being taken towards fixing these outstanding issues that many people have reported over time. Next up, we have some fixes to the GX2 or main graphics engine within CMU emulator itself. For anybody who's not aware of it, GX2 is basically an OpenGL version that is almost like a translation layer and what was pretty much used for all of the graphical output within the Wii U console itself. First up in this GX2 section, we have the ability to use floats instead of integers for viewpoints to match the GPU 7 hardware more closely. They have added a fix to avoid calling GL clear text image on NVIDIA GPUs due to extremely bad performance. We've been told that clearing a 4K texture could take up to 50 milliseconds of CPU time. This would cause extreme stutter, lag and just pauses in gameplay on systems that were well able to run any and all of these games. Thankfully, AMD GPU users were not affected by this issue and now it is also fixed for NVIDIA users. Next up, we've got even more fixes for random crashing that could occur in games that use a GPU cache accuracy of high. We've also seen fixes in relation to incorrect viewport size calculations when resized by graphics packs. This is basically going to fix any of those weird artifacting issues you may have seen in Tokyo Mirage sessions and hopefully also in Pokken Tournament. 
And finally, in this GX2 or a graphics section, they have reverted GX2 Convert Depth Buffer to Texture Surface. I know that's a mouthful, but this change actually was implemented in 1.15.4, but due to black screen video output in games like Devil Third, Paper Mario and Monster Hunter 3, and until they can figure out exactly what was causing these black screen and graphical output issues, this setting is going to have to be reverted. Don't worry, nothing that they have reverted in 1.15.5 is going to change anything in relation to your performance. They are simply trying to add even more accuracy, and until they can add it properly, they're not going to add it to the emulator at all. Finally, for 1.15.5, we have a new change to the H.264 video encoder that was added in 1.15.4. This is going to fix crashes and softlocks in games like Tank 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 and many more, so if you've ever played a game that crashed on any in-game videos, please make sure to test it out in version 1.15.5 and see how it is running now. As usual guys, I'll be doing my usual setup guide for 1.15.5 once it goes into full public release. And as I also stated at the start of this video, I am currently in the process of mapping out a full install guide so you can use Linux and CMU emulator seamlessly. So for any of you AMD GPU guys who are disappointed by the fact that Vulkan is still not available, once I have perfected my Linux guide, hopefully you guys are going to have a way, way better experience on emulators that use OpenGL like like CMU emulator, RPCS3 and Yuzu an emulator for the Nintendo Switch. Well right now I've only done some performance testing using my RX 580 in Linux when using a Yuzu emulator, I can tell you guys that the performance difference between the Windows driver and the Mesa driver on Linux is absolute night and day. Hopefully I can get that guide finished and written up in the next week or so, so please make sure to keep your eyes out for it on the channel. For now, I'm going to be leaving you with some extended gameplay footage of Breath of the Wild as usual running in 1.15.5 with my performance overlays on screen so you can see exactly how it is now running. As I stated in the CPU JIT section of this video, they have fixed the CPU stalls that could occur in gameplay when you're using higher resolutions. The gameplay footage you're watching right now is me running the game at 1440p at 165 FPS limit using the FPS++ version, which I showed off in my video just a week ago. As always guys, if you have any questions in relation to anything covered in this video or indeed any of my videos, please make sure to leave a comment down below this video or if you need faster or even more immediate support, please join the BSOD Gaming Discord. You'll find a link for that down in the video's description. As I said, if you need any immediate help with any of your emulators or games, we'll help you out over there absolutely and no problem at all. Once again guys, cheers for checking out the video. Remember to like it if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and as always, subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.